Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? It is a little bit after three o'clock central standard time, so y'all know what this is. We are live for another episode of Book Talk Live. Today, I am joined by another phenomenal guest. Um, yesterday, we launched her book, and she went Amazon number one in 12 categories by herself. <laughs> how did how to, how to hip hop song go? By myself when I'm in the room <laughs> by myself. No. <laughs> so she she hit uh 12 categories. Number one, Miss uh Coffee Lot Balugan. How are you today? I am doing very well. Thank you um for having me on. Uh really excited, got some exciting news. He you almost gave me a heart attack earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't 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 spoil it, don't spoil it. Don't, don't I know, I know. <laughs> But yes, yes, uh, re really excited. And, um, you know, when you work hard and, and you put, you know, your heart in something and to see it come out in fruition and um, every step of the way, it's just been really, uh, it's been a journey and um, the journey continues. So really excited for right now, taking it in, taking a deep breath and enjoying the moment. Absolutely. Hey, that's how that's what you that's what you're supposed to do is enjoy the moment, enjoy this, enjoy this season. Um, because it's it's for you and for you, um, you and the family. So I could go on about you know and give this long introduction about what I know about Miss Coffee Light, and we call her Miss Coffee Light. Some people call her Miss K. She go by a lot of names. Today we're gonna <laughs> refer to her as Miss Coffee Light throughout the uh throughout book talk live but i want you to kind of introduce yourself to the people tell them a little bit of your story a little bit of your backstory and and who you are ah uh, well um as you said I, I go by quite a few names um depending on uh what area i'm in um but my legal name <laughs> is kafalats balugun and um but some people, of course, know me by my maiden name, Kapla de Shoka. Um, and my youth, I've, I've worked um, with youth for a number of years, and they have um, named me Miss K. And that kind of like has stuck with me um, throughout my career. And so um, K Speaks um, was birthed from there um, when I started my coaching program. But I am a queen mother, and I love to say queen, uh, mother of six, and um, been so blessed. Three boys, three girls, oldest 25, youngest is one. Yes, you guys. Youngest is one. Yeah, that's uh, a gap. <laughs> <laughs> that's a gap. And um, have worked in the workforce development space, working with youth, uh, been an advocate for years for those who cannot advocate for themselves, be it reentry, uh, youth in um, foster care, youth coming out of the juvenile justice system, have done teaching and training um, throughout, throughout my years building teams, and re very recently um, developed a tea line, uh, which I launched the a tea line that is the top 2%. It's a gourmet tea line, and um, that's our e-commerce store. I have a travel agency named Honeybee Travels, and I can now add this to the list. I'm now uh, number one Amazon best-selling author. My first book inspired by my son, Ayan, and that is Ayan Learns His Numbers in Yoruba. Um, I am a child of a Nigerian dad and an American mom and um, grew up back home in Nigeria and here. And so um, kind of equal parts, went to school in both places. So I think that kind of uniquely places me in the uh, in ability to uh know the importance of knowing the culture, being connected to the culture um, while we're here in America. So. Hey, listen, that is, that's all, all amazing. Um, like you, one, one thing I can say about you is that you, you don't stop, right? You put your mind to something and you're ready to go. And it's, it's like, okay, what's our next move? 
and you're already planning it. Like you said, you have a T, you are a speaker, you are a trainer, you are writing books. Um, and there's a few other things that are that I know about that we're gonna keep under wraps for right now. <laughs> but just let's just say, y'all, she ain't she ain't done yet. She is not done yet. She she's a go getter in the in the fullest sense of the word. Um, so so how did this book come to be? Like help us help us out. Hmm. Well, um, you know, like I said, I am um I have a one year old. And um before my one year old, I have a 14 year old who was she was the last of the Mohicans, or so I thought, but love would make you do some crazy things, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, <yeah>. so <laughs> after being a single mom for um, about nine years, I, um, you know, met my husband, remarried and decided to have a baby. Whew. <laughs> yeah. and, um, with that, my husband was um, just one day he, he, he just was very adamant, like, you know, our son, you know, he wants him to definitely be connected to culture as a mom you know we, we're teaching abc and i'm singing to the baby and and you know reading and he says I, he's gonna learn yoruba he's gonna be speaking in yoruba i just want you to know that and um you know i was like yes of course um his siblings understand a little bit but um they don't speak it and so you know just went to sleep that night and it just came to me um that that's it write a book um, because not only important for him to know, but just think about how many other individuals who live here who would want to learn our language and how, and, and not only the language and how just to say the numbers, but the um, the, the culture itself, the, the music, the clothing, the fashion, and just some things that um, we, those of us who grew up there have grown to appreciate and love and so um yeah that kind of came to me and that's how it is so my husband that morning i told him i'm like it's a book sweetie we really i'm, I'm gonna write a book and he was like oh okay because he knows his wife okay great and he went to work and came home and i had the book written <laughs> and shared it with my dad and my dad was like where did this come from mm -hmm. and i i was like dad this is this is a way that I want to be able to share not only with our son, but with the world. Um, and as they go with us on the journey of me teaching him um, my culture and specifically a language, Yoruba. Come on now. That's, that's again, powerful. Um, how many of us, and, and I, I kind of have to selfishly say like, yeah, I wish I knew more of the, of the, uh, of the culture because there's a certain point where it's like, here's my roots. Oh, it cuts off right here. Like, thanks, America. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 but um, but the fact that you are creating something, you're creating a legacy for not only for your son, but also for your other children and for for those who who need that that bridge built for them, right? Um I, I highly salute you for that. There were some concerns that you had prior to the launch. Yeah. We, uh, we, 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 oh, we, you going there? <laughs> <laughs> you going there? There was. I mean, I you know, I um, man, as a mom, and not just a mom of one or two, a mom of six. You just always want to make sure that your your children individually know that they are loved by you you see them as an individual and not as a group and that you don't love one more than the other even though that's a they talk about that a lot at the table especially during thanksgiving i'm mom's favorite our mom's favorite you know <laughs> <laughs> i gotta tease about that um and i always have to come with the favorite word i remember my mom saying you guys are all my favorite so having a book and establishing this um, company and, and, and really these series in honor of their brother was a concern of mine. So I was like, oh, I don't want the attention just on him um, because he has five siblings in front of him. Right. Um, and so, you know, I 
whew, had to take it to heart and called um, the oldest of the girls, my daughter, uh, Jamila. And I just was like, you know, we're about to have this launch. And I remember telling you first and you were like, they'll be okay. And then I called her and I'm in tears. This is like 30 minutes before the launch. And I'm in tears like, you know, sweetheart, I just want to make sure um, that, you know, you guys are okay. And she's like, mom, I am offended that you would not move in your greatness because you think we uh, will feel some type of way. We don't feel no type of way. And I take her word because really, you know, you have that one child who's the glue. She's the glue. She she makes sure she she's a, she's a that glue child. She makes sure she contacts each one of her siblings and she even her uncles and her. I mean, she's she's one of those children. So I know I was like, OK. And she was like, no, Ma. she said we all had a different experience. And so um, it's OK. She said, you know, however, if you want to establish a company in our name, too, so we can get paid, I, we're not going to turn it down. And, you know, just that just brought a smile to my face and really made my day. Um, really made my day, but yeah, that, that was, whew, that was a, a, an emotion, um, that I had to get over and, and, and it's freeing because now I feel like, man, you are right. And, and in their own individual, right. They've done wonderful and continue to do wonderful things on um, my children doing. So, but that was really just freeing for me. And then I can really, you know, share the book, put the attention on, this um, beautiful gift that God has given me, um, Ayan, who is the inspiration behind this book and the series to come. Absolutely, yeah. And there's there's a few different pieces to this uh, to the series that's getting ready to that's getting ready to come. Um, the, now, I want to to know from you, like we know it's um we know that this book is definitely dedicated to Ayan. What are some things that you want people to take away from the uh, from the book and from that from the series? Ah, hmm. I really want people to know how um, how beautiful our culture is. Um, Yoruba's sometimes we're known for a few different things: some good, some bad. Just in, in you know most cultures, but especially here in Houston and all over the U.S., we have such a high concentration of um, people from Nigeria and especially um, Yorubas, and ensuring that our children um, are able to take the culture with them, uh, connected to it, um, other than the clothes and you know, maybe going to parties, <laughs> but maybe you can speak the language, um, understand the beauty um, of the different words. And and again, not even just Nigerian children who might be living here or Yoruba children might be living here, but all children, uh, because exposure is one of the biggest things we can give to our children as parents. They don't know what they're not exposed to. And so we live in a world where, you know, it's diversity. You know, right now there's a big, you know, diversity and inclusion and equity in the workplace, outside of the workplace. There's a big push to make sure that that happens. And this is just a way for me to be able to share a, a culture with the world, um, with U.S. So people are familiar with it. You don't fear what you know. Right. You only fear what it is you don't know. And so just um, bring in the beauty of our, our culture to the world. Um, and that's what I want them to be able to take away from this. It's not only about the numbers. It's also the the beauty of our the city um, in this book. Abuja is highlighted, which is our capital. Well, having our children know that um, we talk about just different aspects of our culture that you know, something, the food that I wanted to share with um, the children and share with the, the adults as well. Absolutely. Well, listen, we're getting ready to go ahead and take our, take a quick two and two. Um, there's a lot more behind the scenes that we have from Miss Kafila. Mm -hmm. um, and trust me when I tell you that this book is rich with content, is rich with information. And it's a short book because it's a children's book but it's one that everybody 
needs to read and needs to hear. So we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back in two and two. I want to say thank you to you because throughout this journey of me even wanting to buy a book or, or, or write a book or publish a book, and I tried to do it on my own, and I have spent um, so much money, honestly, with other individuals who say, oh, yeah, 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 we can help you write your book. And they just give you a, a, a link and then that was it. So I want to give kudos to this man right here, Mr. Destin, because not only did he say he was going to help, he walked you through the um, my accountability or my my uh, B O M B O M B B O B M. There we go, B O B M. I always get tongue twisted with that. <laughs> B O B M family. I want to say thank you guys. We actually have an accountability call that happens every day. And that accountability call um, that is facilitated by Mr. Destin is a way for us to be pick our goals for the week and make sure that we are accomplishing it. And so for you, I want to say thank you for being a man of your word and for being the person and being uh, one who is pushing and making sure that um, I stayed on track and that I was able to accomplish what it is that I said I wanted to do and holding me accountable for the times that I did not do it. And so I definitely want to say thank you. Thank you to you. Thank you for your team um, of supporters. The feedback was great. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. All right. All right. Listen, we are we are back. Um, we are back with Miss Miss Kafilat, um, the author of Ayan Learns His Numbers in Yoruba. Um, yesterday we launched her to Amazon number one best selling author in 12 categories. And so we are back just getting some, some behind the scenes. Um, and I'll tell you all that that you definitely want to grab your physical copy of the uh of the the book share it with share it with those in your life who are special share it with those children share it with the with even with the adults cuz guess what we all need to learn this learn uh parts of our our native tongue right mm -hmm. and so I want to get back into we talked about the inspiration for writing the book we talked about the the, the partial challenge that you had, even with that inspiration. Um, and so I want to go a little bit further into, into you, into Ms. Kafilat, right? Mm -hmm. um, tell us, tell us, what do you think is your biggest accomplishment in life so far? Ooh, that is a loaded question. It's a loaded question because... I feel like I have so much more to do. <laughs> so when you say my biggest accomplishment, I don't think I've reached it yet. However, uh, till date, it will definitely be my children. Um, being able to not only give birth, but with the village, uh, as I always say, it, take, it definitely takes a village to raise a child. Um, with the village, be able to raise children who are strong, who are independent, and who are contributing to society, and who um, in their own right are creating their lane, are, are confident human beings, are, they amaze me, they inspire me, and, and I'm like, who's your mama? <laughs> 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 you know, I remember my son, screen, he, he screenshot a, a review that went to his boss, and um, the review said, you know, you know, the, the individual who came to my home was very da 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 da. And you know, this lady wrote this bigger man said he was really trained by a strong mom. For someone to write that about your child to the CEO of the company, went on their website. That was huge, you know. And he sent it to me, and he, you know, he just he just said thank you, thank you, mom, thank you for teaching me how to speak and teaching me you know, knowing how to behave in different situations, just, you know, and I, I'm just, just amazed. It just me. So I would say that is, 
I believe one of my biggest accomplishment, you know, I can go on and on. I'm not going to go on and on about my children, but just all, they are all in their own right. Um, doing what it is that God has put on their heart to do, creating their own lane, pushing through. And me as their mom can't just sit back. I got to be that example. Right. And so they know, come on, mom's going to go get it. And they, they know that that's something that they, they have to go get too, because God has made this world. There are no limitations. It's just about what you want to work for and you'll get, it. and you don't work for it. You won't get it. So you can't blame anybody else. Right. Um, yeah. Put your mind to it, create a strategy and keep it pushing. And so, and, and not allowing distractions to take a hold of you. So that's, um, I would say what my biggest accomplishment. Hey, listen, and that's, and that's a huge accomplishment because there's, there are people out there who, you know, one of their biggest regrets on the flip side is what they didn't do in, in stealing their kids. So mm -hmm. to, to hear you say, you know, my kids are standing alone. My kids are, my kids are out here and, and being amazing people that speaks volumes. Right. Um, and we can, we can highlight your, your, your youngins, your youngsters. <laughs> um, yesterday, one of your daughters was on and, oh. um, and she was pretty amazing too. I mean, let's, let's talk about some of these accomplishments, mom. Ah, well, I tell you my daughter, um, so I, you know, I, I just talked about something from my son. He's the oldest, and my daughter is a seven-time All-American um, wrestler. And I remember when she was first doing wrestling. Man, this just really goes to show for parents. Sometimes things will happen that you don't really know how it's supposed to happen, but it's just really God making a way for you, right? Mm -hmm. So I had a um, before I. As I said, I was a single mom and I had to pick my children up from high school when they were in high school. And by the time I left work and got there, it was late, right? They, they weren't able to take the school bus at that time. And so she just decided to just join the wrestling club because that was the only club that was late. And um, when she graduated, I remember right before her senior year, I remember her coach pulling me to the side and say, ma'am, I really want to encourage her um because she's really good and um i asked him will it pay for college because that's 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 what's real <laughs> oh yeah hey <laughs> and he said absolutely and i will walk her through and give her and give you what you need to, to help make sure that that happens i said okay well we all for it and had a conversation with her and so she was able um to get a full scholarship to go to school um based on those those her wrestling abilities and then really just got to school and just blossomed um you know competed um she's a she's a thinker she she reads um i, I was sharing yesterday that you know, my love for self-development books kind of originated with her. I liked to read before, but she was in school one day and I called and checked on her. So I'm reading the book and I'm like, what book is that? Oh, my coach gave me this book. It's called Take the Stairs by Rory Vaden. And that just opened Pandora's box for me because, I mean, I like leadership books, right, for work and stuff. The Max, John Maxwell's. And I, I did that, but this was a book that just... I'm like, huh, help me take a more personal look. And so it came from my daughter, that inspiration from, from that. And so, um, again, you know, she's graduated. Um, she's she's a goal-oriented person. And, and I just, you know, just love her, love her to pieces. And she's doing amazing things. Her brother, her, her younger brother, Yasin and her decided to start a community for athletes. Mm -hmm. Um called JTY Fit. I was like, well, what's JTY? Just train, yo. <laughs> you know, they, on, had to, they had to show that that's, that's their age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, being able to, again, they establish in their own name and their own, in their own space. And, and she niched it down before I niched it down, you know, you know, had my target niche, you know, she's, she's creating that, 
area for athletes or for those individuals who are working on a training goal to be able to tap into, create the goal, and then work on it and then have um, accountability along the way. And so, you know, she, she's my sounding board. And then my son, Yasin, who is, uh, I, he was born on my birthday. And um, what a birthday gift, right? That, that was my <laughs> 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 that was a birthday mm-hmm. gift, but he has always been a child, and still as an adult, that he steps into the room and you see the light. And um, his name really is very befitting for him because uh, Yasin in Islam, um, is the like the, the middle the book of the Quran and in like a chapter in the Bible is Mm -hmm. what it is. And in that there's so much power in that verse and so much healing in that verse, so much mercy in that verse. And um, I'm not a scholar, but you know, there's just some of the things. And so his name really, he's really grown into his name. I should say that Um, being a very good sounding board, he'll have philosophical conversations with his 14 year olds and they're looking at him like we just want you to just chill mm-hmm. he's talking about this, your mind needs to be like this when you go to high school and da 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 so uh and then i have you know my two girls anisa and for we're in high school now lord help me lord help <laughs> me <laughs> ninth grade and then the baby so yeah and like i said they're all you know doing well and creating their own lane um, as children, and um, I thank God that um, you know they're they're healthy. They're, they're doing their thing. I support them. Hey, absolutely, and it's it's beautiful to hear you to hear you mention and and like you can literally see the glow when you begin to talk about your children ah. because they're a huge part of what it is that that uh that you do, right? Mm. Um, Let's 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 switch a little bit, right? Um, and y'all make sure y'all go and check out um, JTY Fitness. Y'all make sure y'all go and and check out some of the things that that her amazing children are doing. But we're gonna get back to Miss Coffee Lot now. Here's, here, here's the thing: I know about you. You are such a such a giver, and you are such an inspiration to others. That sometimes it's hard for you to 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 really just hone in and talk about you, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> hey, listen, there's there's nothing wrong with that. I've I've seen real givers. I know what they look like, and I've also seen um, I've seen quote unquote I'm a giver, and they talk about themselves forever. It's like, what you giving besides tips on <laughs> you? <laughs> but um, let's talk about. You've been in the re-entry space for for so many so many years, like years of experience, right? Um, and 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 break down that that re-entry because some people when they hear re-entry, it's like, what does he mean with that? So let's break that down. Ah, uh, hmm. I'm gonna sit back on this one because and we how how much time did you say we have, sir? <laughs> Come on. We can talk about this a lot because one of the things that I, I truly believe is my life mission is really, like I said, just advocate for those who cannot advocate for themselves and teach people how to be advocates for themselves. And so I re entry, meaning those individuals who are being, um, who are incarcerated and being recently released into society and um, have worked with the men, women, and then children. But I tell you, there's nothing that touches me more than working with our youth Mm -hmm. because of, um, it goes back to that exposure, right? You don't know what you don't know. And as parents and as an, as adults, Ooh, you're going to get me started over here, Mr. Destin. No, no. As adults (laughs) in our society, I really feel we've failed our children. And I say this a lot, um, you know, as I have a team um, of individuals who I work with, and I say, you know, don't look at that child or that young adult, because they're not children, and the 16 to 24-year-olds, they're not children. Don't look at them and say, oh, what's wrong with them? Oh, these children are just all bad. And as an adult, what is it that you have done to create something different for them? 
Um, and it's not just their parents' responsibility mm -hmm. to create an environment that supports them and helps them learn and see something different in life. Uh, it's not just their parents' responsibility, it's all of our responsibility as an adult. And so the head, I'm extremely passionate about youth services, how we expose them to work, how we expose them to um, career pathways. We didn't just wake up one day and say, oh yeah, you know, we wanna just, I'm sure you didn't just, you know, wake up and say, oh, sure, I'll just be an author and be a, you know, a, a six figure business, you know, they don't know. We all didn't do that. There was a path. We had to be exposed. Somebody mentored us. Somebody coached us. Somebody taught us. Well, where are we individually in other people's lives or other children's lives? Not just our own children, but how do we show up? How do we support our youth in, in, in those um, places? So working with young individuals who have been recently released or who are transitioning, um, as we say, and giving them an opportunity to find out that there's better out there to help retrain their minds and their coping skills. Um, you know, it's, that's that's my, my life work. And I, and I do that also with the, the men and, um, and women. Um, women, there has been an increase, over 40% increase in incarceration um, of our women, men over the past 10 years. Well, what does that do to our family? Same thing for our men. We have fathers who are absent. We have uncles who are no longer there. Well, what happens oh. to that family? So truly we can't say we have a strong foundation and a strong community when we have the head of our family that is missing. That position needs to be filled and it cannot be filled by us women. We do the best that we can. And yes, I know I might get a lot of backlash on this, but there's just no way, no way we can be a man for our children. That that position means, and it can be filled by uncles, grandpas, and a lot of times it is. And we're thankful for that. Um, but when our men do come out of incarceration, instead of beating them down more, giving them the tools that they need to be successful, returning into society so that they can take their rightful place. That's, you know, that, that's definitely something that, um, you know, we kind of talk about in, uh, in, in my programming uh, have, have helped, um, you know, individuals do that, create a space for them, allow them to transition well, uh, give them the tools that they need to connect to an employment, entrepreneurship, um, and, and, you know, start earning so that they can care for their families. And so, yeah, we can talk about that topic uh, all day. Uh, but it's not, and it's not just reentering, reentering citizen, returning citizens, reentry, yes. But you have to look out, have to bring it back to immigrants. Same thing. Back in your in our country, you have individuals who have taken these education courses and they've gone to a certain level and they've migrated to a new country and being told, oh, no, you got to start from the bottom again. And that's not necessarily true. So helping those individuals learn what is it that they need, maybe they need to be upskilled in order to get the better jobs, teaching how to. Um, interview here that's different than how we interview back home and how you got jobs, right? And so really, um, you know, that's another area where I, I really focus and, again, giving individuals the tools that they need to be successful as they transition from A to B. Hey, listen, absolutely. And and I want to I wanna touch on a, on a few things that you just mentioned um, as far as like the male being the male being absent, um, the male being being absent. There's obviously we know there's strategic reasons behind why that's happening. We won't absolutely. go into it in this show. Maybe we start right. a different show but, uh, <laughs> on that one. <laughs> yeah, it, because there's there's a lot of deep rooted. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of deep rooted strategy that's happened long before 1995 or 2021. Right. Um, but as the the other thing that you mentioned, like 
when when you start talking about youth, we can we can go there all day because that's my that is my true passion is seeing these youngsters get to the next level, right? Um, and giving them a different different pathway because, like you said, a lot of times you don't know what you don't know. A lot of times kids say, "Well, what school do you want to go to? I want to go to University of Oregon. Why? Because I like that green and that green and gold that they got." And they uniforms is nice. What about the education? Don't what know. You mean? <laughs> what you mean? I, I just want to go to that school for the colors. Or, you know, what they what their career choices are early in life is based on only what they're seeing and what they're being exposed to. So mm-hmm. that exposure is huge. So I, I definitely um enjoy the work that you're doing in that space. And and there may be something coming soon uh with respect to that same that same path that mm. we'll touch on touch on maybe later right okay. but um we're gonna go ahead and take another quick commercial break we'll be right back again in about two and two mm. and yeah if you don't know the two and two that's <laughs> old uh, love connection chuck willary way back in the day What's but it? we'll be right back <laughs> Everybody has a story, and so do you. We know that you've been through life. Been through heartaches, been through pain, been through depression. You've thought about writing your book for years, wanting to help change lives because of the things that you've overcome. We don't know what your story is, but we can help you turn your story into a living breathing book that creates opportunities for you to impact lives and change the world the business of books is here to teach you the opportunities that come from your book how to write your book how to brand yourself how to market your book and how to get in front of the right people to sell that book We have an amazing team of designers, an amazing team of editors. We have a team behind you to help you get through your first book and get it to the world so that the world knows you are here. So remember, everybody has a story. It's time to write yours. All right, and we are back. We are back. So for those of you who are just tuning in, we have been talking with, uh, with Ms. Coffeelot about her her book, um, her children's book, Ion Learns His Numbers in Yoruba. Um, but not only not only about how the book came to be, but also who is Ms. Coffeelot and her passions, her her love for her children, how amazing her children are, um, the things that she's she's been working on, the things that she's getting ready to work on. And um, you know, we talked to talked a lot about Ms. Coffeelot. Now let's talk about your writing process and what the what the process was like um on this one, because we know there's a follow-up. So Tell us, tell us a little bit about the writing process. What was it like for you? Like, was it was it easy? Was it difficult? What was the most? Uh, yeah, <laughs> nothing, not, n- nothing worth having. <laughs> it comes easy. It's t- yeah. It takes work, and so I wouldn't say it's easy. I I would say that the process was it, it was it was a journey of learning. Um, you know, I, I said I, I throughout the day kind of wrote wrote a book and then showed it to my husband and my dad. It's like, oh, look, I got it. And they're like, oh, my gosh. Well, that was just the beginning. <laughs> that was just me put, kind of putting the concept together and uh, just an outline. Right. Um, because, you know, there's editing involved and there is, you know, the illustration. And really, what does what do you vision how do you share with someone what your vision is in your head of what the scene is supposed to look like? You know, that that's something that you have to do. I've learned so much. I've learned 
um, just about, you know, when you do write a manuscript about the illustration that goes along with it so that the illustrator, I never knew that it took a team to really write a book, did not know that. And so, you know, the process of writing and going through this, um, this journey has, has been a, you know, I've learned, I've learned a lot and continue to learn. I continue to learn just about the marketing and then the sales. And then, um, you know, as a speaker, how do you come up with your services? How do you price it properly? How do you just those things? And, you know, with your guidance and mentorship. And if you don't have someone who knows what they're doing, you're going to be taken for a ride because I, I know I've written a couple of checks and was taken for a ride. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, that that process um, this is definitely a good process. If it is something, and a lot of people say that to me, oh, I want to write a book, write it. Just start it. However, don't worry about format. Don't just go ahead and write it and get your thoughts and then find good mentorship that can help mentor you along the way in now putting it in category. But yeah, it's, um, you know, that was, that was that process. A lot of time it takes dedication um every day and so there have been times where i've had people say to me you know you don't talk on the phone you can't call you can't you know when you're you have to be focused <laughs> yeah it, it's definitely a level of focus yeah so it's a level of focus um but it's worth it at the end because just like a, a baby, just like when you're growing something new and you plant a seed and you see the seed grow and you can harvest it. And I'm not talking walking into Walmart and buying that apple or buying that tomato. But if you know that you were the one who planted that tomato, mm -hmm. right? And you watered it and then you saw it growing and you trimmed the weeds. I mean, I can liken the process to that process. And so when you get that tomato, it hits different when you eat that tomato and put and slice it over a salad. It hits a lot different than if you just walk into Walmart and say, oh, this is firm. It looks nice. And you just buy a pound of tomatoes. It, it just, it hits different. It looks different. It smells different, tastes different. All of the senses. <laughs> Come on now. Listen, there's, there's, there's something to be said for hard work. Yes. Right. And, and like you said, it's transparency moment for myself. A lot of people come to come to me or come to us and it's like, oh, I can do this myself. And I'm like, bye, do it yourself. And you find out what, what we've learned over the years. There's blood, sweat and tears that goes into each and every project, especially when you're passionate about it. And unfortunately, like you said, you've written a lot of, a lot of blank checks to, to, to people who, they said they were going to do one thing and it didn't come to come to pass. Mm -hmm. um, so for the on behalf of the industry, my apologies. Um, <laughs> to, oh, you've, rede you've redeemed them. <laughs> oh, no, I ain't trying to redeem them. Oh, well, I mean, well, well you because you did what you said you were going to. Do, so you. <laughs> yeah. I, on behalf I was, of the industry, I know who to connect to, who I stay connected to. How about that? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, but as as far as uh, I was I was just raised different. Like you, you do what you say you're gonna do, and right. and this project is actually a, a beautiful book, um, and it does capture the essence. Like even even as we're we're still putting the final touches on the on the hardcover. So make sure small plug, huge plug. Make sure you order your uh, your hardcover or your paperback co copy from Miss Coffee Lot personally, do not, and I'm gonna say it again, I'm, I have nothing against Amazon, but make sure you get those autographed copies from each of the, from the author. Um, that makes a huge difference. And, but, but with just looking at the, at the illustrations and the way that the, the wording is, has been put together, like this is a, a beautiful book. It captures a lot of the culture. It captures, you know, the, the, the music, of the culture it captures the food in the culture it captures the 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 fun time right um so the vision was was definitely uh well thought out and and well planned and and even in in the in the few pages that we did get access to then um thank you for that uh, you are welcome yeah. My, i need to 
I need you. I might need to capture this, what you're saying to my husband, because he was a little offended. Um, so now in, in our country, the different states or the different cultures kind of have their own, I will say states, um, have their own unique dishes that they mm -hmm. eat. Um, and it's the same here too, right? You have in Louisiana, you have gumbo. That's like, if you go to California and eat gumbo, you like, this is not real gumbo, right? Mm -hmm. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> well, <laughs> and similar to, to that, um, where I, I'm from or your state and Ibadan is um, where I grew up. And there's a native food that we are known for across the world, which is Amalai, we do our abula, which is um we do and um bakery and uh with stew on top. And so in the book, kind of show I show that um Ayan is trying to make a choice of what he should eat. Well, his dad is from a different state mm. and they have a different native food. <laughs> <laughs> And he couldn't understand why I didn't put his native food mm -hmm. <laughs> in the book. But yeah, you know, it really does, you know, capture that. And, um, you know, I just I just try to share, you know, that experience. And it, again, it's just some of the, the beautiful aspects of our culture that I wanted to share with with individuals and, and share with um, people. So yeah. there's more to come. Yeah, definitely more to more to come and tell you. Tell your husband, don't be tribe tripping. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> we can't we can't call it set tripping. Hey, come on now. <laughs> right. But but yeah, you, you captured a lot in there. Um and and let's let's kind of move a little bit forward with it, right? Because your next steps, you have a few a few more books along this. Um, what can people expect from you? when it comes down to, to some of these upcoming projects. Are they all going to be children's books or like, where you where are you going with this? Well, um, you know, my youngest, who I said is one, technically does not turn one until the seventh. And so in four days, he turns one. And so this book and the series under this company is dedicated to him. And so 85% of those proceeds go into an account that he can only touch um, four, four things in his life, which is um, he gets married, goes to school, goes on Hajj, which is our holy pilgrimage, and buys a house or real estate. Um, and so that that the proceeds go into that account. And then 15% of them goes to fund a literacy campaign, a literacy project that we have back home in Nigeria. And so um, wanting to, I thought that was extremely important that we made that connection. Right uh, for back home, and use that the ability to um, purchase not only Ayan's books um, but other authors and, and books supporting small business owners, and then um, send it back home for the children who do not have access to um, those those things to be to gain access. So under that umbrella. Yes, we have a series of children's books coming out. Um, we have a coloring book um, that is accompanying, um, that is also coming out. Um, we have some flashcards that are being designed right now. Um, and then, you know, the alphabet. Um, my daughter's like, Mom, when is the alphabet coming? I want to know the alphabet. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> so we have the alphabet coming. And then just, again, this is a journey. He's one. I mean, learning a language is a journey. And so um, our goal is really to have series of books under that umbrella. Now, under um, my coaching and transformational um, program, we have some books that are going to be coming out as well, really focusing on helping people, um, as we said, transition in their lives and creating a strategy. How do you do that? How do you stay motivated when the, the motivation is gone, right? Um, create a strategy on how you get from point A to point B, whether you're transitioning from incarceration, transitioning from work, um, one kind of job to another. The pandemic has taught us a lot of that, right? A lot of us were laid off and we're like, okay, wait a minute, what's my going to be my next move? Do I want to go back into that industry or not? So how do you create a plan, um, a plan of success? So I have a book coming out um, 
to talk about that. And another one um, for women, um, as moms, we give so much of ourselves. We become caretakers for our families. And a lot of times we neglect that self-care. And um, anyone who knows me, <laughs> I used to have a rule where on Sundays I don't answer the phone. I don't pick up the phone. And they're like, well, what's wrong with you? I, I used to call it, I'm going under. Well, going under meaning that I'm going, I'm removing all distractions. And I, I'm it's just... I don't care if I'm just in my house by myself watching TV all day. It is, this is my time. Um, but self-care, self-care is extremely important. How can we incorporate self-care in our daily lives? And um, as women, specifically to women and, and, you know, and men, men need self-care too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> and need oh, that yeah. time. <laughs> and, um, and children too. <laughs> so, you know, just really incorporating that, creating boundaries, um, just those, those kind of things. So yeah, those are some things coming down the pipeline. Um, speaking engagements, um, have been, you know, asked to come and speak, um, which I love this, the something I love doing is teaching and training. Um, so it's, you know, right along my alley and excited to just um, push the book. Come on now. Listen, as I told y'all in the very beginning, she is a goal getter, or shall we say a goal getter. Mm. Right? Yeah, mm. constantly going going after those after those goals. Um, I gotta I actually have to agree with you on one thing that self-care is important. Um, one thing that I one thing fortunately once um once I did get married um i had to do something different right mm -hmm. after a certain point at uh is it used to be about two o'clock in the morning where i would stop answering calls now it's like seven o'clock at night if it's after seven i'm not i'm not touching the phone if it's before a certain time i'm not touching the phone and that's something that people don't realize that you actually need because your your concerns aren't necessarily my concerns. Your emergencies aren't necessarily my emergencies. And Ooh. if you don't take that self-care, then you sit there and you end up taking on the burdens of the world when you're supposed to be nurturing and giving back to the world. So I salute all of that. Um, and with the with the future children's books, I know that those series are going to be phenomenal. Um, yeah. We we need to start uh we need to start figuring out what elementary schools, what middle schools, what high schools, um, what daycares are out there that need to hear this message because believe it or not, there's more than two languages that are being spoken in America. Say that one more time for the people in the back. You gotta say that loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and we we need to we need to start becoming that melting pot by Absolutely. learning multiple cultures and understanding. So you know, one thing that I don't have on my on my Duolingo is any of the the African languages. Hmm. So thank you for uh, for starting this journey for us because it's something that's definitely needed. Absolutely, it's definitely needed, right? Um, what's your advice to new authors? Ah, hmm. Take a deep breath and just write. Take a deep breath and just write. Um, morning routine is extremely important. I know for me, as a mom, busy working nine to five and still um, and, and running um, multiple businesses my morning routine is extremely important having the 30 minutes or an hour of focused time where nobody is you know you know oh sweetheart make me my coffee or you know we eat breakfast or <laughs> i have a baby saying oh, man, it's time for a bottle lady <laughs> <laughs> it's time for breakfast or all uh, the girls. Well, mom, I thought I have my socks here. I, I need that time. And so for new authors, I would say find your sweet spot. Find you a place where it is calm. It is quiet. Find you the space and the time that works for you and just write. 
get it on paper. Don't worry about punctuation. Don't worry about anything. That's why we got editors. Just, <laughs> just mm-hmm. write, you know, um, because if you do that and just do the work consistently, you will see it take shape and, and form um, and definitely get mentorship because the mentorship is what's going to, once you, uh, what we call a brain dump, Right. Once you've done that, the mentorship would allow you to get very clear on the outline and then you can have that outline and, you know, you take the steps and then you can kind of flush it out. So, uh, so, so to speak. And so um, that would be my advice to new authors. I, I can tell you now in my mind, at least five to ten people with stories that are so important and the world needs to hear, but just that fear, just that fear. They haven't been able to, um, like like Ms. Monique said yesterday, I always say, pull the trigger. You you know, you just gotta go for it. Um, Gotta go for it and then ask God to bless it. You done your part, right? Just go for it, do the work, ask God to bless it, and then watch him do his work. Yeah, absolutely. And and with that being said, um, for new authors, definitely just start writing. Stop stop asking. Will, will anybody anybody want to hear it? Anybody? Nobody's gonna want to hear my story. There's there are people who are making millions of dollars every year doing the craziest stuff on YouTube, on TikTok, on any social media platform. There's a tribe for everybody, right? Um, what about the what about the work ethic? What would you say for uh, for new and experienced artists? Well, I'm gonna tell you what first come to mind. <laughs> if you ain't about this life, just just let that go. <laughs> I, work is work. I mean, it's it's you know, man. People in my circle will tell you I really don't I don't do excuses well. And I don't do whining and I, I I will navigate away because work is work. Work is work. God created us. It was work. Um, bringing a child into this world from, I mean, j- down to the seed. I mean, they had to run against each other to get to. I mean, you can look and bring this from all kinds of ways, right? You know, sperm had to run to the egg before one of them said, woo, it made it. And, you know, it was, you you were here. Work is work. There's nothing that you're going to do. And this is something for my, my younger audience, my millenniums. It is not popcorn, sweetheart, sir. It's not popcorn. You don't just put it in the microwave and, and press two. It is work. Um, it is consistency. And I speak this to entrepreneurs and to myself uh, on some of the areas that I need to develop. Um, Being more visible is one. Yeah. (laughs) Being more visible is one. Um, And and going live and and speaking on on social media, especially, is one. But it's consistency and it's work. Um, But it is so worth it. It is definitely worth it you put the work in um have a plan execute go work on it it's definitely worth it so absolutely absolutely put the work in and it ain't just for millennials right yeah if you if you are over a certain age get off your b bleep 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 and get to work let's get it done come on I speak to, for myself. It took it took a while. It took a while for me to um, really get focused. And you, it absolutely right. Uh, my daughter said that too. You know, our experience, mom, was different. Mm-hmm. Their experience is gonna. Our siblings, our younger siblings' experience is gonna be different. Why? Because mom had learned and she had grown, and I have you know developed. And so yeah, it's. Um, it's not just for young people. You're right. It's for, you know, all of us, you know, let's don't wait. Don't stop waiting. Oh, I will do it later. Why? Why not do it? Right, now? It doesn't yeah. have to be perfect. You just need to do. It's just the action. It don't have to be perfect, but pull the trigger. Just do it. 
Just do what it is that you need to do. And you will see how everything will come as it should. And God will, will you take that leap and God will really put in your path the people who you need to meet to help you achieve that goal. Come on now. Listen, we have been blessed by Miss Kafilat sharing her story, oh. sharing her inspiration for her book, um, talking about how the things that she's doing, and she's not just doing one thing, she's doing a lot and getting it done at a high level. Um, so how do how do people connect with you? How do they follow up with you? Ah, yes, they can follow up with me here on Facebook. Um I believe we're streaming into Facebook. Yes, here on Facebook, uh, K Speaks. Um, they can follow me on Instagram, which is K Speaks underscore one. Uh, say my honeybee, uh, the T, our commerce, our T line is uh, honeybee underscore T on Instagram. And our travel agency is honeybee travels. Um, on Instagram. So you can connect with me on all of those platforms. YouTube channel is launching and coming out. <laughs> so I'll be more, more visible there and have more of my trainings and um, some of the master classes that we will be launching um, very soon will be coming out on that channel. And so, yeah, stay tuned. But definitely for now, that is the way that you can connect with me. Also, website K dash speaks.com come on listen you all have heard it here uh, make sure you go and grab your copy of ion learns his numbers in yorba directly from miss coffee lot um the link is listed and we're actually gonna put that link and um we're gonna put that link in the chat so that you all can follow up with the grab your your autographed copy of the book <laughs> and we will see you guys next week. Love y'all. All right.